information. Golf Bravo 23 Charlie CQ. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now I've had this knocking around in the cupboard for quite some months now and I thought it was time to get it out and see how well it works. Now this is an ATU, an antenna tuning unit which by design attempts to match the impedance of your radio to the impedance of the connected wire antenna within a frequency range of 1.9 to 54 megahertz. Now this particular model is rated for 150 watts is far more than your black box 100 watt HF radio. The AT50, as it's called, comes in a waterproof box, so it appears to have that remote ATU feel. It does not come complete and you have to build parts of it yourself. However, the main board does come fully populated, so there is no need to fit board level components. I guess this is also handy if you want to provide your own box. The board looks pretty well made, but to be fair, there is not a great deal of components on the board. The logic for the ATU is controlled by a pre-programmed PIC chip, which appears to have N7DDC's ATU code, as this call sign shows up on the included and pre-wired OLED display when powered on. In the bag of accessories, you get the required components to attach the board into the supplied box, along with a power socket, SO239 socket, and the main insulated wire terminal, which your antenna wire connects to. There's also other items such as a tune switch and earth lug in the bag. Now let's get on with the build. So first we need to mount the board into the box using the supplied metal standoffs. Placing the board in the middle of the box, I marked out four points, which I will drill through shortly. These are just M3 sized drill holes and it's plenty for the screw, which goes through to the standoff. Now I'll fit the standoffs to the bottom of the board. All screws and standoffs are included in the accessory bag that we saw earlier. Once the standoffs are fitted, I can now finally fix the board into place within the inside of the plastic box. At this point, I then soldered on a short power cable and then connected it to my bench power supply, which was set to 12 volts. Once power was applied, the green LED lit up and the OLED display showed some information. So this was a good start. Everything appears to be working so far. Now it's time to hook up the input and output ports along with the power port. The SO239 socket I'll mount on the bottom. This will be the input to the ATU where the coax from our radio connects to. This was simple enough to fit and using my Rima tool bit made it even easier to make the required hole for the connector. There was a little earth tag which is fitted on the inside of the box. This we will attach the outer of the coax to shortly. Now this piece of coax didn't appear to be included in my kit, so I just used a cheap piece of RG58 to bridge between the input SO239 and the input on the board at the other end. Not sure why the coax wasn't included, but it's just something to remember that you will need. Next, I will install the output connector, which is an insulated wire terminal. These have a porcelain feel to them and they kind of crunch when you're tightening up the nuts. So don't over tighten them or they will break. To connect the terminal to the board, you can use the supplied copper wire. Now this is quite hard to bend, so I suggest bending and measuring how much you need before soldering it in. Soldering it in is pretty easy to do, although you will need a fairly hot soldering iron to get the solder to adhere to the copper wire. Now in my kit, there was two lengths of copper wire. One of them was enameled and the other wasn't. So just be aware of that if you're using it, as you will need to scrape the enamel off for the solder to adhere. For now, I'm not going to mount that OLED, so I'll just tape it inside out of the way. The tuner can operate in automatic mode, which means you just need to apply power. And if the ATU determines the high SWR of above a certain value, then it will automatically start a tune cycle. So great for just mounting outside and forgetting about it. Now here we have it mounted outside and for this test it is connected to a 20 meter length of wire and the bottom earth lug is connected to a ground rod. I've also got a piece of wire laid across the ground also connected to the ground. Now I've got it powered by a 13.8 volt CB power supply which is just sitting in my conservatory and then just using the length of power wire between the power supply and the ATU. Now when it comes to testing, I'm not expecting this to work on the lower bands. 
I have read that this tuner needs at least 40 meters of wire to be able to cover between 1.9 and 54 megahertz. But let's hook up the radio and perform some tests to see where it will tune. Let's first test it on the 70 meter band at 18 megahertz. What you will notice here is that the radio is set between 5 and 15 watts and the mode of modulation will be FM or CW. When I press the PTT on the mic, you'll notice the SWR starts shooting all over the place and then eventually it will sit at a low SWR. The rapid needle movement is the ATU relays clicking in and out attempting to find a good impedance match. Now luckily it appears to work on the 17 meter band quite well. Now let's try 21 megahertz. This time it takes a little longer to find a match but it does manage to bring it down to a usable 1.5 SWR. Of course we would much prefer this to be a lower figure. On 24 megahertz the tuning was pretty much instant with only a slight flicker on the SWR needle. So another usable band with this 20 meters length of wire. 28.5 MHz also seems to be in tune as well as 29 MHz, but this may have been more related to a previous tune that I performed on this band. Now, when we dropped to 40 MHz, the best tune it was able to make was just over an SWR of 3. And when I tried 7 MHz and 3.5 MHz, it continuously attempted to find a match, but it ended up failing. Now, I don't think this is a fault with a tuner, this is more related to the length of wire that I used. Now I believe that my length of wire is actually resonant on around 40 meters and I'm sure when using remote tuners like this, the antenna should not be resonant. More research on that is required. I did also test on 50 megahertz, six meter band, but I failed to record it. Now I did find that it did work rather well and was able to give a good tune, but I didn't make any contacts. Now having a good tune or match or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't mean your antenna is going to work amazingly. You could load up a wet piece of string to provide a 50 ohm match to the radio, but that still isn't going to work well. Now there are many remote automatic tuners available on the market, and this is just one of them. I do however have a MAT40 in the cupboard which I've not even tried yet, and what's nice about that is that it's controlled by the radio directly. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on the MAT40 tuner, working with my Yaesu FTDX10. Now you may be wondering where is the footage of me making the QSO with this antenna and the ATU. Well, in true British fashion, as I was recording this video, heavens opened along with lightning and thunder. So my antenna testing was pretty much done for the day. Now if you use one of these, let us know down in the comments what you think of it. How well does it work and is it a keeper? Now these retail around $100 depending on where you look, but I'll leave some links in the description for you to check out. Don't forget though, this isn't going to arrive pre-built. You do need to do the work as shown at the start of this video. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.